But uh, one thing I wanted to to get to next was um, one interesting uh, situation about living in Finland as a expatriate, basically as somebody who uh, emigrated here uh, from a country that doesn't speak Finnish, and that is the language. This Finnish language, yes, uh, Suomen kieli. Yeah, <laughs> the the mother tongue of Finland. It's basically uh, super easy because even my three-year-old could basically speak it. <laughs> That's uh, right. Even the baby is speaking. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. However, I cannot speak it very well at all. Even getting into weird, uh, uncomfortable situations with my neighbors about my dog pissing <laughs> on the snow. But anyway, <laughs> that's another day. So uh, yeah, it's it's a difficult language, and I I have come to think of it as not so much that it is particularly difficult, but that it people in Finland are educated to such a high degree that um, and as well as young people are really interested in popular culture around the world, that most people, at least in this capital area around Helsinki, are speaking relatively good English. So you can get by uh, without speaking Finnish, which I don't recommend. I recommend learning the language for sure. Yeah. And it's a really super interesting language. Uh, and I won't get into that whole thing, but it comes from this, uh, I think it's called Uralic or something, uh, where it's a it's a it's own language family that I think own it's completely separated from these Latin languages that basically yeah and that's why we have our own like uh, rules yeah grammar it, rules it's here totally in, it's, in a lot of ways screwed up from yeah. the outsider's yeah. perspective like the, the Sweden Norway and the countries okay Russia and the our neighbors we don't have like anything basically common with those languages here just Estonians and the Sami yeah, the Sami people yeah. have a have the same language roots and Hungarian but it's it's just re- that it, that makes it really interesting for me and I actually really love the sound of it uh, and I, I do enjoy trying to learn and trying to speak it so um, but it is I have a lot of foreign friends who live here and they all have the similar issues where they have been to the language schools which are provided by the government if you like and i think it's somehow mandatory to do go through the language school when you come here uh, well you don't if you ha- want yeah. to get like some you know social benefits from the government true yeah and the social benefits are are super key as well by being a, an immigrant here because uh it's tough to find a job if you can't speak finnish yeah and by the way like uh our government Now, spring 2019, when we record this, is, uh, if I understood correctly from the news, I just glance them, like, uh, quickly yeah. before this thing, are planning to do some mandatory uh, language test for immigrants and uh, refugees that come here that they would need to have at uh, on some level in Finnish language in some time after being in the country. Yeah. And that would be like a key for some uh, slash, I don't know, social benefits or even the, uh, the uh, you know, agree- uh, permission to stay for longer. Yeah, I'm not sure, but that's that's the one project that the government is doing now. And we have been getting a lot of like an immigration slash refugees past uh, years during the troubles in Syria and stuff. Yeah. And, and um, lots of stuff has been going on. And, and now the government's will is to you know, try to get people to uh, know the language because then it's easier to come come by in the, with the society and getting those jobs, yeah. as you referred. Now. Yeah, and I think it's important to learn the language, and um, but it's also terrifying and I think really intimidating at the same time, especially if you're not uh, six years old. Yeah. And when you happen to be 36 years old, it's it is a heavy, heavy thing. Right. But... Um, but by the way, I, I, I have to drop this yeah. there and like it's a sort of a... Like um, I'm saying something, and it's uh, also a question for you. Sure. Like my American friend mm-hmm. uh, is going through this language school, been here a couple of well, like year and a half, I guess, and like um, speaking English, obviously. Yeah. And tells me that um, people who are not from the countries that have English speaking background are actually learning the language. Faster than those who speak 
yeah. English as their native yeah. tongue or speak for some reason English really well. Yeah. And they the English speakers are left behind kind of in the in the you know process of le- learning. They're not learning that fast because apparently we are helping as a people too much of just starting to speak English with yeah. them. Yeah, 100% uh, I, I agree as well as uh, Russian speakers um, I think are held back as well, mostly because they, uh, I think it's just natural that when you come to a, a foreign land, you find people who are have similar qualities of yourself, that especially language, because then you can become comfortable. And um, But I found in the language schools that I've attended that Yes, 100%. That uh, the first one I went to, there was basically half the class could speak English relatively well, then half the class could speak Russian fluently. They were basically Russians. And then there was one guy who was f- speaking Albanian and um as far as I remember, and at the start he seemed to be having a real hard time because most of the things were then explained in English or Russian when people couldn't get it. Right. But that guy uh, quickly surpassed everybody in the class and um, was literally at the top. And ba- basically because he had no choice. And I think that's what it comes down to, that uh, when you have no choice, you learn really quick. But um, yeah, enough about the language. I mean, I think uh, it's a, it's a, it's something that people have to I guess, experience themselves. And I love the idea that there's not a lot of people in the world who do speak Finnish so that when I do travel back to Canada, I can have like a secret language. <laughs> yeah, right. And by the way, now we're on the on the language um, and the uh, difficulty of grammar. Uh, mm. Just one quick note. We have yeah. 16 different conjugations for every word and and those conjugations, conjugated word means different things. Yeah on like what you're doing or, you know, what does it refer to? Yeah, it's fucked up. There's yeah. like 300 words for dogs or something <laughs> like that anyway. But uh, yeah. Hey, and by the way, like this one quick note here yeah. before we move to some other subject. You were talking about this, you know, that you don't get things free and uh, and like, and I had uh, want to point out this thing. So when you get your citizenship yeah. here, yeah. and yeah. if you're a male... Uh, we have this thing, the responsibility of Finnish men, called the mandatory military service, mm. which is a great thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, uh, yeah. like that means that everyone who is between 18 and uh, 29 has a mandatory one year or six months or nine months uh, military service, and uh, they are basically conscripted, mm. the Finnish citizens. And they do their armed service in Finnish defense forces in different branches. Right. And, and that's a responsibility of the male male uh, citizens of Finland. And uh, we have voluntary military service for for the ladies too. And, right. and actually, like, since it became voluntary uh, and the military opened up for women, we have, like, uh, several hundred, uh, several women in the year, like, even 100 women in a year hmm. on military service. Yeah. And that's just one thing to point out. But I guess you are over 29 already. I am, unfortunately, in a lot of ways, because yeah. um, I know that there's a lot of guys who uh, that's not their bag. They're, yeah. They don't want, uh, they're not interested in serving in the military, and but they could do the civil service as well. Yeah. Um, but then I know a lot of guys who are not, uh, I think the, the stereotype of like um, uh, this like violent gun loving, you know, cowboy wants to go in the military and you know whatever blow shit up and but really it's it's from what i uh, have seen those those friends of mine who are like the guys who uh, detest violence and and hate guns and things like that did their military service and they have some of their most fondest memories and friends from those times so and i understand that it uh well I think I think it's a really imp- important thing in a lot of ways, and I mean, uh, I I would uh, I I love that uh, women are are wanting to get in there too, and I mean I understand that maybe it's a bit weird to make it mandatory for women as well. Well, there are several different reasons, and they have nothing to do with equality. It's a 
logistics and and the the finances of things and right. I think it's pretty good how it is now. Right. Although of course everything can be better. Yeah. And to to mention that like which is a astounding number for many like we have uh, constantly 900,000 trained reserves. Mm, scary. Yeah, well, but like that's a <laughs> yeah. okay, that's a huge number but that means that 900,000 like a uh, uh, service age people uh, between 18 and 60 mm. are trained and currently yeah, on it, reserves. And, and we'll, this is not like a pro-military speech. It's just uh, stating the fact that mm. it's one part of being in Finnish. It is actually quite true. And uh, one thing I'll just pop in there, um, but is that there is guns in so many households in Finland and such low gun violence here. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean... You're uh, referring now to hunting. Hunting, yeah. yeah. And So, I mean, basically, I don't think a lot of these people are having guns to protect themselves. No, 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 no. So, no. but um, it's quite a normal thing to have a gun uh, in a gun locker. And, and of course, Finnish and people following the rules. And that's regulated yeah. really, they, really heavily by the powers that be, meaning yeah. the police and... They the fucking government. put them in those gun lockers and yeah. lock them and make sure everything is... Which is the right thing to do, because exactly. you need to be responsible with those. But going from there, I want to talk about uh, what it is with Finnish nature. And, right, uh, yeah. And, like, the seasons, where there are actually seasons here. You would think, getting pretty close, where the Arctic Circle passes right through the top, well, you know, the upper part of Finland where Lapland is... You would think that uh, it's pretty darn cold, yeah. and in fact, it is. But last uh, week we had s- something like minus twenty-five degrees yeah. Celsius. I don't know what that's in Fahrenheit. Doesn't matter, because <laughs> <laughs> we use also Celsius in Canada and in Toronto last week. I think it was even up to minus thirty-five. So that's nothing new to no, the Canadian not. to be in. Toronto, no. Toronto's an interesting place, uh, southern Ontario. It experiences like insane heat waves up to like plus 40 degrees Celsius when I was there in uh, end of August, September. So right. getting into f- the fall season, it was still racking up over 30 degrees. But then now it's in that minus category. And the wind is fucking brutal. And then the, the wet air, it's the humidity oddly enough in the winter that kills you yeah so and, but, but here's the dryness the dryness that also kills me as well yeah. i i had to get a, a humidifier in toronto i had a dehumidifier yeah. and here i have to get a humidifier because uh i developed like a weird uh, sinus business because i'm so used to this wet air right so anyway but uh other, but you know what? The funny thing about that is because the places are so well built that they're basically trying to build buildings to last as long as possible. So right, of course, you can't they're... have mold or all these things that yeah. will rot the the wood out. And highly regulated business that too. It's true, and definitely has its flaws in a lot of places where any construction any construction company in the world, maybe not any, but there are lots that cut corners and mm. they definitely exist in Finland as well. But but anyway, uh, we're talking about the nature here and the nature is like stunning, unbelievable lakes and landscapes and there's so much of it that uh, it's quite amazing. You don't have to go far to see, to feel like you're at the cottage basically. And um, one amazing thing about nature that, uh, translates all the way into most buildings in Finland is a sauna. And uh, there's these ranta saunas, these saunas by the the coast, the shores of lakes and rivers and things like that, where you bake yourself silly and then dive into the water. Mm. And usually the water is traveling from the sea, the Baltic Sea, so it's actually pretty nippy yeah. at any point But of the year. We are the land of thousand lakes, so... Sure. Yeah. And uh, so... Saunas are like nuts. I, I first wasn't used to them, and they were just kind of like a luxury thing. And in Canada, we a lot of times they do these hot tubs, these uh, jacuzzis. Yeah. And uh, but here, they do that too a little bit. But um, it's the sauna that is it is the thing. And I th- I don't think people in North America get to um too often to experience a proper Finnish sauna. No, no, in the movies 
as I see, there are these steam rooms that are like a yeah. half-assed versions of sauna. It's like nothing like a sauna. Yeah, like the when you go in the sauna, you're totally naked, right? Which yeah, which is the thing. You yeah. are. We are the one of the most private per people in the in the earth, the Finns. But we, when we go in the sauna, we go butt naked. You yeah, know? and you talk a lot in and, the sauna. And yeah, and there <laughs> we talk. They talk. Yeah, we talk at sauna. Yeah. So we share, you know, our stresses and concerns mm. are and are what what we are happy about and stuff. Yeah. It's like it's the we are the most open there. Yeah, you know, being naked and it's uh, like a holy place for us. We when we can like uh, uh, relieve our stress and. Yeah. And even ourselves. I've heard that uh, political, like big time political meetings and decisions happen in the sauna. Right, with the right. Pre- yeah. President of Finland. Even I, I have heard of uh, like uh, dealings with uh, with Russia done and like decided at least in yeah, the sauna. Yeah, you're referring our old, the longest reigning president, Urho Kaleva Kekkonen. Yes. Which he reigned 25 years with some uh, exceptional laws, but let's not go into that one. <laughs> let's just say that the terms are limited now in 12 years, like two six-year terms. Yeah. But yeah, he used to used to do those deals in the sauna with the Russians too, and and there was like a alcohol involved heavily. Well, and there is this story that some you know unions and the representation of the workers and the the union of the employee employers didn't get along and they couldn't meet the agreement. So Kekkonen, President Kekkonen uh, basically invited them to his sauna to, you know, that this fucking strike needs to be over. Yeah. And you guys are getting the results. Yeah, yeah. And what do you know? The the meeting in the sauna was held and the A success. Guy, yeah, guy yeah, it was great <laughs> success. Yeah. Yeah, and there was a bit intimidation. He was a powerful, powerful man too. Yeah, I, I'll tell you, my first proper sauna experience was uh, went to meet my now father-in-law for the first time, and uh, they were saying, um, "Well, do you want to go to do you want to go to the sauna?" And I was like, "Sure." And then, okay, well, Mati will take you. All right. And I was like, "Oh, well, I I didn't really bring my bathing suit," and they were like. <laughs> Yeah, you, you don't you don't wear a bathing suit in the sauna, no, no. and I was like, "Well, all right then." <laughs> <laughs> so then I went, uh, yeah, met uh, my future father-in-law, uh, totally letting everything hang loose, and had a good elbow to elbow chat in the the Ranta sauna there, and uh, that's what, how we conduct business. Yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah, and, and we have work parties. I uh, go with my. My lads from my work and go to have a sauna and uh, these awesome sauna boats. Yeah, those are the coolest things ever. They, they, they are take you out to the, right. some spot in the Baltic, uh, little bays or whatever around Helsinki, and pretty, I guess, in a way, private or whatever. And wood fire sauna in the middle mm. of this boat that you, I guess you <laughs> you'd think would just burn up and you'd be done. But um, amazing, awesome stuff. And you never, I don't think you get to know somebody well enough until you're having a chat with them and their dick is staring at you. <laughs> <laughs> so that, those are, that's like, uh, actually an oddly like awesome experience because that when you're, it just feels like supernatural and, you know, in funny, supernatural, but yeah. uh, very natural and you dive into the Baltic Sea or whatever and your penis goes and shrinks <laughs> away. But uh, <laughs> I was in the pool. But the thing is, nobody checks your penis in the sauna because no. you know it's just. And, well, and then the the funny experience for me is going into a sauna then with somebody else from North America, where right. my buddy uh, from Mexico, who lives here, basically similar time as me, um, who uh, actually uh, runs Estrada Creative Helsinki, which uh, operates in this studio as well. And a really talented marketing media dude. If we're and a plug, hell of a guy. Hell of a guy for sure. Plug that in there. And um, he, uh, yeah, he had a, I think it was a New Year's party or uh, or something like that anyway. And he was like, yeah, we're going to go have a sauna. And I was like, cool. And then we all of a sudden were like, have you ever been in sauna with another guy from North America? So, and he was like, no, actually. 
And then I was like, oh, okay. And then in my head, I'm going like, all of a sudden, it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we got over it pretty quick, and, and it was a good time. And uh, as it always is, and I, I, I have a... Funny enough, I also have a sauna in my apartment. Oh, you have? Yeah. That's, that's great. <laughs> so you're it, it getting bl- there. It blows my mind, actually, yeah. you know, that uh, we don't have a... I'm not making mad dough or anything like that. I don't have, like, an extravagant place by any means. I had an apartment that was uh, 28 square meters. Hmm. That's, that's fucking small, if anybody... Uh, okay, it's not the smallest ever, but it's pretty small. And uh, we had... A sauna in the bathroom. Of course. Yeah. Actually, the bathroom was like bigger than the rest of the apartments. <laughs> but, <laughs> it's know. a Finnish Yeah, but Finnish, Finnish people love yeah. love their bathrooms. Yeah. They need to have a s- space. The showers are just basically the entire room is a shower. And uh, you squeegee the floor and everything like that. That's that's new thing that that's doesn't uh, normally exist. But saunas are great. And uh, Well, it ain't get more Finnish than that. It's true. But yeah. We got a lot to talk about uh, as being, uh, I guess, an emigrant or immigrant or mamu to <laughs> Finland. And uh, we're going to do a two-parter. So we're going to continue this uh, on a on another date. I don't know if we'll run them back to back or however, but uh, we'll continue with our welcome to Finland talk on another They Talk. So definitely tell us if you have thought about coming to Finland? Do you live in Finland? Are you an expat as well? And what do you think about Finland? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you wish that you never knew it existed? Or is it your newest romance? But join us next time on They Talk, where we will talk about something that will guarantee to perk your ears. (laughs) And before then, like, subscribe, comment... And ring that bell! <laughs>